Well, that was Leila Nathu with that report. This is Lee Milner, who's going to bring you the business news in just a moment. But first, our headlines here on Afternoon Live. Hello, I'm Lee Milner. Here are your business headlines on Afternoon Live. And some good news for the high street today. According to the latest figures published by the Office for National Statistics, retail sales in January improved by 0.9% on the previous month. It's the largest monthly rise since March and a stronger performance than expected by economists. Consumer demand slowed down though considerably late last year but has since picked up after the December election. Lloyds Banking Group has announced its pre-tax profits for last year fell by more than a quarter after paying out billions of pounds to customers in PPI compensation. The insurance policy was intended to cover loan payments if, for instance, customers fell ill, but the insurance was often sold to people who didn't either need it or want it. The Australian airline Qantas has, uh, has warned that the current coronavirus outbreak could cost the company $150 million. Flights to Asia have been cut by 15% until at least the end of May. And to avoid job losses, the company also plans to freeze recruitment and ask workers to use up leave. It follows wider concerns about the impact the virus will have on the global economy. So, a lot of football fans thought they were off to Euro 2020, uh, and they're not now, are they? No, due to a big technical error, uh, basically, the, UA the UEFA has apologised for this. They had a, a certain amount of, of tickets available, uh, and basically, they're not. Um, although the tickets can be refunded, though... Well, hang on, what do you mean, they're not? Well, they're not. They weren't there. Huge technical error. They, they literally aren't physically there. They're not, they're not going. So, even though you can get a refund, you still probably booked your hotel, and you probably spent some money on transport and people are saying now they've wasted lots and lots of money. Uh, our business correspondent Danny Hewson can tell us mm. more. Uh, Danny, how on earth has this happened? So what have UEFA said then? Happened. But that's all right for them, but what about the fans? Danny Hewson, thank you very much. You see the man doing the bins in the background. It's compulsive. No. No, all right. All right. <laughs> Um, right, um, let's just uh, talk about the high street. Did I hear you right? There's some good news. Finally, finally yeah. some good news. Yeah, we had um, a few uh, bad months at the end of last year. Now, as you heard in the headline, uh, we've finally got a 0.9% improvement on the previous uh, month. But don't get too excited. Uh, the market isn't in great shape at the moment. Lots of businesses saying they're struggling with business rates, which is basically the tax on the commercial property. And according to this guy, there he is, look. This guy uh, says that the economy as a whole is not growing as fast as some people hoped it'd be. He's called uh, Robert Choates. He's the head of uh, uh, the, office the office. The Office of Responsibility. Well it's done, yeah. There, yeah. Do you know what that means, though? Do you know what it does? Yeah, it looks after the responsibility for the budget. and It gives oh, the government the forecast and everything. You're That's... reading my script here. Well, OK, I'll give you that well, one. Well, someone needs to. Well, <laughs> the cheek of it, the cheek of it. Let me do this. Right, so that was him 10 years ago. I bet he didn't look as good as that 10 years ago. Uh, he's now leaving, though. <laughs> <laughs> and he told us that he believes that, you know, it's, it's all about being realistic. Uh, just play the clip. <laughs> so, yeah. So, basically, what I was trying to say is don't get too excited. You know, it's only the start of the year. Only a month ago, we were talking about uh, the worst Christmas on record in 25 years. And also, we've had 10,000 job losses in the retail sector. So, that's what I was trying to say. OK. Do you want to have a quick look at the markets? Why not? OK, so the FTSE 100 uh, doing slightly better. We were, we were expecting that, though. Uh, there's a lot of more um, there's a lot more confidence as the rates uh, of new cases in China are slowly falling. Also, a lot of um, support from banks as well, central banks. They've actually lowered interest rates, uh, trying to promote uh, borrowing and investing. That's also... Oh, well, I wasn't expecting the DAX or, or <laughs> any of that on there. Actually, I was expecting the Dow, but they've obviously fallen uh, from the coronavirus. And I was also expecting to see something with Lloyds on there, as we saw in the headlines. But uh, anyway, there you go. There, there's the markets of the day. Have we, have we got those or are we... No? No. Well, Maybe I'll go. get you them in, a, in an oh, hour's time. An exciting bulletin from, from you there. <laughs> I've learned a new trick. Just, just, just play the clip. It gets you just out of any trouble. Just play the clip. You just shout out, play the I'm clip. I'm just following you. I've never done that oh, in okay. all my time. All right. Yeah, but anyway, I've just learned something. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, she will be back, maybe, a little later on. Uh, you're watching Afternoon Live. You're watching Afternoon Live now. Lee Milner is here. She's bringing you the business news in just a moment. But first, our headlines here on Afternoon Live. <laughs> Hello, 
I'm Lee Milner. Here are your business headlines on Afternoon Lunch. Well, you tweeted about an experiment that you were going to play on me today. Yeah. Uh, what's it all about? Right. So, I've got a £5 note, a £10 note, and a £20 note. Right? I'm going to give you one of these notes, and you've got to tell me which one it is with your eyes closed. Right? Right. So, close your eyes. Oh, no cheating. You. All right? I'm going to show the camera mm -hmm. which note I'm about to give you. Don't peek, all right? OK. Right, here we go. Put your hands out, man. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Right, tell me which one it is. £20. No, see? No, don't keep it. No, that doesn't, that doesn't count. <laughs> that doesn't... <laughs> you know, anyway, no way. Right, so anyway, right, go on. Well, that little experiment is to show you just how hard it is to differentiate between the notes. And, and that's why the Bank of England has released its new £20 pound, yeah. uh, polymer note. Here, I'll lend you it for now. Right. Designed by the artist J.M.W. Turner. It includes two see-through windows. Well, I don't think it was designed by him, to be fair. What? I what? think he features on it, Oh, features, it? sorry, features yeah, yeah. him. Yeah, of course it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. It's going really well, well. <laughs> features him. It includes two see-through windows as well. Mm -hmm. um, also, it's got a, a multicolour foil, and apparently that helps to beat forgers. So, mm. apparently this is going to be hailed as the safest bank note. Um, but it's also better for people who are blind as well it makes it easier than f uh, for them to use it as because tactile marking ta yeah, yeah, have can, a feel on the feel edge it, you should have um, yeah. three separate clusters of mm. dots at the end if you feel the 10 pound note mm -hmm. on the there you go it should have two clusters of dots yeah. so you've got that and also it's much larger than the 10 and the 5 pound you can give me them back in oh, just a second uh, while that. i speak to david clark who is the is from the royal national institute of blind people which has been working with the bank uh, to make money more accessible for people who are, have loss of sight. Uh, David, I can imagine you're welcoming this. Absolutely. It's been a, a fantastic collaboration between ourselves and the Bank of England and all those people that have contributed to the, to the study that sort of led to this proposal. Of course, the, 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 the new polymer notes are what's made it possible because the tactile markings are, uh, you can clearly be felt there as a, despite your experiment. And, um, <laughs> You know, it's really, really easy because I think what we've got to realise is that, you know, when you're paying money across, you know, when you're buying, buying a meal or buying clothes or whatever you happen to be doing, the money's almost secondary to the transaction. You want to feel confident and independent about what money's in your pocket. So is this going to make a real difference for you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, there's several factors there. You mentioned the size and, 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 and the comparative sizes, but that's, you know, that's quite a, a difficult thing in itself. But the, the tactile markings make a huge difference. And although... Also, for those with um, uh, some usable sight, the, the contrast and the colouring are, are really strong as well. So it means that people can be confident with their money, they can live independently. And for someone like myself, it means I don't have to worry about using the wrong note, particularly giving too big a tip, perhaps. I was just, uh, you know, you touched on that already. What's it actually like for you dealing with change when you can't actually tell what's being handed to you? Yeah, I mean, I know if you go to other countries, sometimes the notes are the same size, so it's absolutely impossible to, uh, to work it out. Um, we've had different size notes um, in this country for quite some time now. But as I said, the, 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 the polymer and the, f the feel of it, plus these, you know, they're tactile markings, they're very strong, they're very different. It's clear that, as you said, that the zero, uh, the, the, the two markings and the three markings, um, really, d they, they denote what, what the currency is you, you've got in your hand. And really, you, you know, you don't really have to think about it in whatever situation you're in. How often do you use, uh, use cash instead of, uh, say, contactless? Well, I think that we, you know, we're definitely moving towards using much more um, uh, contactless, but of course that throws up all sorts of other issues. For example, currently I often have to take someone's word for it that the amount that's on the screen, because most terminals at the moment um, would not explicitly tell me what that amount was. So sometimes, sometimes it's a bit better to deal with cash that you can actually uh, uh, understand and feel and know what you're know what you're giving out but of course there's a lot of work going on in that area as well and uh, and we're working very closely with, with uh, UK finance and others to come up with all sorts of solutions to make make cash and card and contactless much more accessible David Clark thank you very much for joining me um, pleasure do you use cash or contactless contactless mostly now yeah, same um, and actually uh, we've been speaking to uh, the Governor of the Bank of England, Mark Carney, and he says actually fewer people are using cash as well.
The cash usage has gone down quite substantially. So when I came here, it was about two-thirds of transactions, a little less, were, uh, were paid for with cash. Uh, now it's a little less than one-third. So um, I guess that's some accomplishment. <laughs> There's been a big fall. But we're committed to provide the best banknotes for the people who want to use cash. Look, there are two million people in this country who only budget with cash. Uh, it's important that they have the best notes that are available and that, uh, again, help celebrate uh, the heritage of the United Kingdom. You should have seen what he just did there. <laughs> this moves. <laughs> he just moved it all the way around. You're so cheeky. I was going to give you some really interesting facts about the £20 note, but uh. you know what? I'm not going to now. Let's go to the markets. Uh, so the FTSE, yep, yeah, up as we expected, um, only slightly though, and that's because we haven't been seeing as many new cases of coronavirus uh, over in China. Uh, if we look at Lloyd's though, that's already been in the headlines as well. Uh, I know I was talking about the PPI compensation; it's hit them quite a big, uh, quite quite big. But that was, you know, last year. It, things are on the up now for Lloyd's, uh, and the Dow doing exceptionally well. They've been doing very well over the past couple of. Uh, couple past couple of days uh, uh, a few record highs for them as well okay thank you very much there no, you can <laughs> can't, you can't trick a trick i'll take my money <laughs> you do that well done see you later you're watching afternoon live from bbc news